Hello everybody, welcome to Word Talk. This is episode 16 and we're doing a third episode on depression. We're going to wrap depression up for you. I'm Frankie Randino and this is Jimmy Ray. Happy to be with you. I uh, want to help you in any way we can. Let's pray real quick. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, give us the words you want these people to have. We're here to try and help people to come out of what we were in. We were bound in sin and addiction and 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 all the different things the devil put on us, God, and we want people to get delivered. We want to deliver Jesus to them, God. Set the captives free is our prayer. We ask it in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You want to start? Well, uh, just to recap, um, we spent a lot of time talking about when you're in sin and you're not with God, when you don't have the Lord and you're not a child of God, you're not servant of God, the right biblical way, living free from sin, you can, um, in sin it's terrible. The hopeless gets even more hopeless because you don't have God to turn to and you can't pray and all the things you can do as a Christian. So we touched on that greatly last one. And I think we want to touch more on, you know, when you get saved and become a child of God, it doesn't mean you don't go through problems. You can still be greatly fought by the devil and, and depression can set in if you let it and you don't do the right things. Right. So we wanted to kind of touch on that a lot this time, correct? Yeah, because like he said, we're trying to, I forget what your terminology was, wrap up this um, on depression. What was the word you used? It wasn't wrap up. It was, I don't know. You just want to finish this. Yeah, and I mean, it might not finish. You could go to five for all we know, but we want right. to touch every, we want to touch every type or situation if we can because there's so many people going through so many different types of things so we touched on doing it and being in sin and on drugs and alcohol and everything else so why does a christian get depressed i mean if you become a christian don't you isn't everything perfect <laughs> you asking me no yeah, i'm asking you to no, start um, we both know it's not but i wanted to comment on what you said about it <clears throat> wrapping this up and hopefully through this episode, God will be able to teach you how to wrap up depression and give it back to the devil. But just a smidgen little um, going backwards in time to the last episode. Remember we, we discussed how that sin separates you from God. And that's the reason why it seems like there is no hope and no remedy for depression and discouragement. And... That's understandable because the Bible teaches your sins that separate you from God. And I know I said that again, but the Word of God is not something you read once and throw it away. You should be constantly saying the same scriptures, thinking about the same scriptures. The Bible says to meditate in the Word of God day and night. Does it say read it once and throw it away like a newspaper? I imagine in one place, not imagine, but I know it says in one place, Study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And, and when, I like to put them on a spot. Like and when somebody uh, says, "Well, you know, I've been to theological school, theology school and whatever, and you know, and I've read the whole Bible through," I, I hear people say all the time on the platform, "I've read through that whole Bible. Whoop de do." <laughs> That's God's holy word. And it's going to take more than reading through that Bible. The Holy Ghost is going to have to take you through that book according to how ready you are to receive the next thing he wants to teach you. And to prove, sorry. And that's a big deal. To prove that, he's been in that Bible over 40 years. I was in that Bible over 25, then I fell away, but I came back to the Lord, been in it about another year, give or take now. But I can tell you as a matter of fact that we both find stuff multiple times a week and call each other like little kids. Hey, did you know, hey, we're sharing stuff with each other that we read, in, in all honesty, could have read 20, 30, 40 times For and sure. reread it again because spiritual things must be spiritually discerned and the Holy Spirit brings it to light in a whole different way. And it's like, oh my goodness, it's an answer to somebody's question or... Yeah. Um, happens all the time. The Word of God is a living, breathing thing and it also said that Jesus was the Word made flesh. It's not just a regular book. No, it's not. It's not a book. And I was thinking about that this week. I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but whatever the Lord wants, and we just want to yield to Him. But I was thinking about this week, that that book, it's not a book. That book is God. That's God. And 
people, God's heart. It's God's heart. And people go through it and read it and think that you can connect. This is the thought that came to me this week. They think that they can connect A, B, and C and figure out the Word of God. It will never happen. Because that book is from a different kingdom. The thinking of that kingdom is different. The, the thought process of that kingdom is different. The only way earthlings can understand that word is when the author, the Holy Ghost, the one who wrote it through prophets of old, explains it to you. That's the only way. You will never connect A, B, and C. You can study to show yourself approved till the cows come home. Without the anointing, you'll never get it. You'll yeah. be confused and mixed up and we see it all the time. He's 100% right. And the Bible does say in 2 Timothy to study to show the self-approved, but it also says in another spot that, like we said earlier, spiritual things must be spiritually discerned. And the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible by giving it to prophets of old. You're never going to understand it, like you said, without Him. Without Him. Enlightening it and bringing it to life, different parts, leading you here and then into another spot. It's all Him. I mean, it's just all Him, period. That's right. And... It, it's spiritually discerned, like Frankie said, and the Holy Ghost is the only one that can tell you what he meant by the scriptures. You cannot figure it out on your own. You cannot read it to understand it. You have to yield to God to get to understand. That's a difference. That's a good way and to look at it. And another thing is, too, is there's another part that says no private interpretation of the book of that prophecy, meaning the whole Bible. You can't take one, one, two scripture, three, four scripture, and base a whole thing. You have to put it all together. Right. You have to. And that's why when the Holy Ghost speaks and he gives you something, you know, I've never thought about it before, when, but when these people take those scriptures and they use them at, of their own private interpretation, if you'll notice, they take their scripture and tell you what it means. But when the Holy Ghost tells you what a scripture means, you know what he does? He, he says... This scripture means this because looky here, looky here, looky here, looky here. We look. sit around and talk. And, and he just connects the yeah. dots. And we'll get, not an enlightenment, but we'll have an idea and we'll look it up. Oh man, that scripture. And before you know it, we're like four or five deep on the same thing. Well, that said it there. Oh my goodness. And that proves it there. You don't just take one thing. That's so exactly what he said. In a manner of speaking, God backs it up continually. Yeah. And you'll find things in the Old Testament to prove in the new, and you'll think prove in the new to prove the old, and so on and so on. It's God's word. And he doesn't make mistakes. And he'll show you things that when he will show it to you, you'll be like, what? Are, and the Holy Ghost will tell you something, and he'll be connecting dots, and you'll be like, are you sure? And I'll have to stop and go back and look at those scriptures because I'm so dumbfounded that I've never seen it before. You know what it's kind of like? It's like, Putting together a crossword puzzle, but without it, I mean, but but it's going to take a special power, a special, you know, you think of like Superman and, and um, all these different Marvel, whatever, you know, and Spider-Man and all these cats. They have different powers, right? Um, abilities. It's like this is a special, the Bible is a special crossword puzzle, a special puzzle. That without a supernatural power, you cannot put it together. And that's exactly the way it is. It really is. And <laughs> it may exactly. sound weird, but that's okay. And we're not saying we got the power to no. understand it. The Holy Ghost is the yeah. one we're saying that has the power to yeah. give you the Word of God. And I'll give you an example because I think it's really cool. This, and it was in my sermon, I think, yesterday. Um, I explained, was that yesterday that I talked about Eden? And Eve and all that it was Sunday. Well, I thought yesterday was Sunday. My it's days go weird. But it was this past. Yeah. It was this past sermon. Yeah. Okay. Now, I've never heard this preached. It, it's it's definitely there. This is not opinion. It's just as clear as anything. Did you know that Eve was never named Eve in the Garden of Eden? She was never called Eve. Not once. So he preached this, and it's not that I didn't believe him because I know he preaches out of the Bible. But I looked it up because I was. I had to I look was it like, up. What? And I looked it up, and this is true, what he's about to tell you. Yeah, and I was like, what? The same thing. The Holy Ghost, was he was taking me on a deep journey. You'll have to hear the sermon. It was powerful about what does God want. It's powerful. I was working on it today. I didn't get to finish it just too much. But the Lord was taking me on this deep study, 
Now, here's the thing to remember, too. I didn't even have a Bible in my hand. That's the beauty of it. He'll, if you really study to show yourself approved, Jesus said that the Holy Ghost would bring back to remembrance the things that Jesus has told you, and in the other scriptures, too, of course. It goes without saying. But it has to be in you before the Holy Ghost can recall it and bring it to you. So I can be sitting in the presence of God and not even having a, a Bible in front of me, and I go on a deep Bible study, not an opinion study, not a theory study, not what I think. I'll just hear the Holy Ghost explaining something to me, and he'll immediately back it up with this scripture, this scripture, and he'll tie the scripture together, so much so that I literally go, what? And I want to make sure that that's according to the word, because if that if it doesn't match the word test, it's no good. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter what he thinks, it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter what I think, it doesn't matter, it's got to be from the word, it's got to match the word, 100 I don't care if an angel of God appears to you in the brightest light, such a bright light that you are overcome with a peace and a joy. If he says one thing that's not according to that word of God, that is not of God. That's of the devil. And this is how some cults have got started. Well, that would mean that the devil comes as an angel. That's the word. He that's comes as word. an angel. No, seriously, I know I try he to can make appear as an angel of he light. He can, and he does. Yeah, he, he's a yes. punk and a con artist. Major. So let's hijack this. We didn't know it was going to go that way, but it's good. There's never no, bad good. talking about the Bible, studying it. Well, actually, or how are they going to get out, to, out yeah. of depression? So that's exactly what I was going to say. We touched on sinners and depression. It's terrible, okay? Now we're talking about Christians, people that have asked Jesus into their heart. They've surrendered their lives to him. But I'm not done with my story. He tried to take us down that road prematurely. I'm just kidding. Because remember, I was getting ready to tell you how the Holy Ghost will open up the Word and what he opened up about Eden. I didn't get to finish that. Oh, and I don't yeah, want to leave you hanging. Sorry. Um, no, I asked. Don't be the young teasing you anyways. So the Lord let me know that Adam and Eve were like one person to him. This is, And I'm not going to go into great detail about that part, but that's what he was starting this whole message that he was giving me Sunday, is that he dealt with them like they were one person. Because they were bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. The Bible teaches that they were one. You'll have to go study all that. I'm not going to go into all that. It's very clear that they were made as one. They became one person. But here's what was strange is that the Lord told me that, or the Holy Ghost, and he is the Lord. The Holy Ghost told me that Eve was never named Eve in, um, in Eden. And I had to go look that up. And it's true. I was shocked. It tells you that while they were in Eden, God I believed it exact thing. I almost didn't believe it when the Holy Ghost told me. It's such and a he shock. Formed man and woman and called them Adam. Called them Adam. Now I didn't think he was. I know he doesn't lie, but I was like, "What?" And I looked it up, and I'm like, "I've read it a million times." And, and I'm then like, "After what? they failed and sinned, and they left Eden, that's when." He named her Eve. Yes, when she brought forth forth Cain. Yes. He said, it, he called her Eve then. But that's Eve. Adam called her Eve. Not Adam Eve. called her Eve, not God. Adam named her Eve because Eve, it says, is the mother of all living. And when she had her first baby, he named her Eve. So the whole time they were in Eden, she didn't have the name Eve. But anyways. And I bet we both combined read somewhere in Genesis there. Hundreds of times, and neither one of us knew that till this past Sunday. No, so that just goes to show you that the same thing that you've read countless times, the Holy Spirit can bring into the right time and the right place and the right situation, and it can completely just blow your socks off. And yeah. it'll be what you need too. And it'll be what you need. That's right. Yeah. He can lead you to what you need. Now, so we're leading up to what what you need. And here's the thing. Okay, now we're getting into about the depression. You, A child of God, as we discussed last week, gets born again. I mean really born again. They come and they're like, I'm a sinner and my life stinks. I need a new life and a new heart. And without those feelings, you're never going to get born again. If you don't want a new life, you're certainly not going to give up the old one. You've got to be ready to surrender to get that new life. Okay, well this person becomes born again. And I mean really born again. And almost always they come up crying or laughing or something. And I, I mean coming up, 
they don't necessarily have to be down on the floor, but spiritually they are. And they come up with a you, resurrected life. Yeah, you surrender and you come up a different person. Right. And from that moment, like I said, they either come up laughing or grabbing somebody and hugging them or crying or whatever because it's like suddenly the clouds all went away. Or the scales fell off or something. Yeah. Something. You get so much reality in some way, shape, or form. Everybody gets it in a different way. But if you don't get it, yeah, no. I mean, you do. Just you can't become a new creature and be like, uh, yeah, it's man. that. It's a miracle. It's uh-uh. the, what we're telling you is the greatest miracle that can happen to a man or woman or a boy or girl on earth. And the my greatest miracle because he takes out a heart of stone and replaces it with a heart of flesh. And my reason in bringing that up is that you weren't depressed that day. You, you, there wasn't a care in the world, and I think I've told you all how I was going with a girl, loved her was going to marry her. I, when I got saved out for God, I wasn't even dating her. I forgot all about her. Never went and seen her again. She did one day come see me and I witnessed to her and told her about my new life. crazy if she was watching? Yeah, I hope she is. God bless I you. hope she Her name is Sherry. God bless you, Sherry. Yeah. And, oh, I hope she is. So, and she can tell you Jimmy died that day. She didn't get to see Jimmy ever again. He died. He left, he left Earth, so to speak. They buried You know where he is? If you want to find me, he's down in the dirt somewhere. You have to go find him. He's buried. Oh. And that's the way it works. Yeah. Okay, my point in saying all that is this. You come up with joy and peace and love. And even for a certain amount of time after that, somebody could say, I don't believe you. And you're not really safe. That bounces off you like a, a little speck of sand. They can't rob you of what just happened. Your family can turn on you you don't get to bed. Nobody believes me. Not when you really get saved. It is a dose of reality that nobody can take from you. And usually and nobody can understand unless they experience it themselves. And Sorry. you don't care. You might be grieved and want them to understand, but it doesn't stop your joy. It doesn't stop your peace. doesn't stop your love. Anybody who gets saved, there's a takeover like that to where... You just you have this joy unspeakable. You have this peace. You have this love, and you want to tell the world, right? You all agree if you've been born again. So what I happens? Agree. Yeah. So what happens? A year later, I talk to you, or a month later, or two or months, months later, later, whatever. I'm hoping you, you stayed in there longer than that. Well, yeah, we're not saying you failed God, but no. But it's not, a week later. It's not going to happen. Now, now I have seen people. One thing I do want to say too. I thought about this. Maybe I should say it. From the time God saved me, he's always drawn to me people that struggle in the area we're discussing. I have a lot of experience in helping people that struggle with depression, anxiety, um, and the devil just tormented them. I, I mean, I've known many people that are just... They would just be bawling and crying, help me, and, and come to my house, help, help, help. Literally, that tormented. And I'd have to talk to them and pray for them and, and, and give them the word and help them. So I've had a lot of experience. For some reason, God has seen fit to draw a lot of people with problems and some that have mental spirits that torment them throughout their lives with depression, anxiety, and things like that. In other words... They literally had a problem with that all their life. But I think it's, you could say that everybody has, has had times when they've been discouraged, depressed, anxiety, sure. or whatever. I mean, unless you don't live on a place called Earth. <laughs> because that's going to happen. But, now, here's the thing. When you get saved, God opens your eyes and He opens your ears and you're, you're given a new heart. And you're under... That anointing, even if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost yet, and we're going to have it, that probably needs to be what we need to go into next, the Holy Ghost baptism, dude, because it is so needed. But when you're under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, because I, I was under the anointing as much as you can be and not be saved. There's a difference when you really get the Holy Ghost, but he's still with you. Jesus said he'll with, he's with you and shall be in you once you get filled with the Holy Ghost. He's the one that convicts you. He's the one that brings oh, yeah. you to Calvary. Right. He's the one that makes you realize your life is pooey and that you need Jesus. And he's the one that gives you the power to become a son of God or a daughter yes. of God, as the word says. To those stay that, one, too. To those that believe, he gave power to become the sons of God. 
And um, it's the Holy Ghost, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. The spirit is the one that gives the power. And so you, you, you've suddenly ran into depression and you're struggling. There's only one reason why that happens. You've stepped out from under that anointing. And sometimes in, it can happen gradual too. Oh, it, it almost and, always does. Yeah, and you won't even realize it. Because yeah. that's happened to me before years ago. I would be in there with God and doing well. And, you know, the devil's not stupid. He's slick. He's smarter than us. Go ahead and just realize it. He's the only, he's second, only smarter that, you know, to God. He, he knows how to come against each one of us, and he knows how to slightly get us off, 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 maybe a little less time praying, a little less time studying yeah. the Word. Whatever the case is, whatever carrot he's dangling, even if it's work, you got to work, but if you step out of that, what he said was spending time with God and that anointing on a daily, daily basis... Then when you something happens and you really do get upset about something, depressed about something, you reach back. It's not there like it right. was. Right, 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 right. It's right. still there, but you got to seek it. You got to run back and you, oh Lord, help me. But if you stay with them on a daily basis, then when you reach back for it, it's right there. Like I said last week, mm -hmm. I used to be really upset about losing a loved one, and before I really got right with God and started serving Him on a daily basis the right way. The depression and the, everything will come in, and it just env in, it, it enveloped me. I just wallowed in it. Now it tries to come back, and it has nothing to stick to. And that's because I live with God every day. I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. But I right. run after Jesus on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis. And when that garbage comes back, it has nothing to stick to. Right. And I can tell you, and I'm not saying this bragging, I'm saying this to help you and to try to encourage you. There's not a day goes by that I don't feel his presence. I've learned to recognize his presence. And, and every day I feel his anointing and his power all day and all night. I've come into it. The Lord's taught me how to do that. But I still get hit with depression. I still get hit with discouragement. But the difference is, is when that comes upon me, okay? It has nothing to stick to. Right, right. I turn to, to the, I yield, I should say it like that, I yield to the anointing. Now here's the first thing you, you've got to recognize is what Frankie said. The, the anointing is the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the one that enables us to walk the Christian walk in a victorious manner. He's the one. Uh, now, I'm not even talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about living a life where you're not depressed, discouraged, wondering if Jesus hears your prayers, wondering if he, he really loves Remember you. Remember the scripture care about we you. read the last two podcasts. It's the Lord said he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, joy, a sound mind. I think I got that power, right. Kind yeah. of power, love, and of a sound mind. Yeah, but... It's the fruits of the Spirit are good, uplifting, encouraging, strengthening gifts. Mm -hmm. They're not depression and loneliness. No. And there's not, I mean, I've dealt with it. He's dealt with it. You know, we all have dealt with it. Yeah. I mean, the closer you are to God, the less it has or it will have nothing to stick to. The right. closer you are, the less it can stick to the point where it will bounce off you. And that's a fact. All right. And now I want to prove just real quick. A few scriptures that we brought up before um, that confirms that it is a lack of the anointing. And I know people don't want to hear that, that it's a lack of the presence of God in their life. But here's scriptural proof. The Bible says there is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. You say, where's that at? I have no idea. I think it's in Psalms. I think it's in Psalms. <laughs> is the presence of the Lord we don't plan the this Holy out. Spirit the anointing? Yes, all the same. Yes, the Holy Ghost is the anointing. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of God. It's a good God. One, fullness of, yeah, what's another and, one? Uh, but think about that for a minute. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. So we're saying in the anointing of God is fullness of joy. So There's therefore, if, if you don't have that joy, you're not in His presence. Now, so there's a disconnect, and Frankie brought up an extremely important part. You've got to keep in mind, this is not a do-it-yourself kit. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. 
Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You're going to have to cling to Jesus if you want to be victorious. The branches grow off the main vine, correct? Oh, look, I forgot that's there. Yeah, but the branches Break grow off. Branches off. No, Show don't up. you dare. It's my new ficus tree. Um, without the vine, the branches can't grow. And if the vine withers, the, the branches... You, yeah. you, it's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. Yeah. I can't live free from sin. Frankie couldn't even get drugs, get off drugs himself, let alone become happy and get rid of depression and, and, and one point suicidal thoughts and all the mess that I was in. I was in a drowning in a mud puddle and I never got out. But the Bible says, we say it almost every single time, it's not I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. The Holy yes. Spirit does it. I can't do anything on my own without him as far as what we're talking about. So now we're going to get into some sweet stuff. Because, okay, we've established that there's a lack of the anointing in your life. Okay, so the reason why there's a lack of anointing, this is not the super sweet stuff. It's coming. Because I've got it in my heart. I, could, I, could, I thought of some things that would be really cool. But the reason why there's a lack of the anointing is because you accidentally shifted to living yourself, not in sin, but you're not depending on Christ, leaning on Christ as the vine, and letting him be the one that nurtures you as a branch. And just a little bit of slip will make a difference. We're not saying you went into sin, we're not saying you don't pray every day, nothing like that. Just a little slight slip is enough that instead of it bouncing off you, it'll stick maybe for a minute. Right, and then a couple days later, it could stick for a couple minutes. And it might and take so some on. time. But here's the thing. We're creatures of habit, and I'm going to say this more than once. i got another reason for saying it a little bit, but we're creatures of habit. And if you don't start your day in prayer and talking to God and, and coming under the anointing and bowing before the Lord, not necessarily on your hands and knees, but that's good, but in your heart, you can bow on your hands and knees and go to hell because you are living for Jesus. But if you don't start your day talking you to God and here. surrendering to Him and, and putting Him first and ask and ask Him, help me with my day and, yes. and getting the peace and the love. And give that day to Him. Yes. And see, every day, and let me tell you what I do. I didn't think about doing this. I'll tell you what I do, and it works. You want to go into my prayer time with me? I'll tell you one thing. You want to answer the phone when I call until he's done praying. That's a fact. I want to answer Trisha neither. And the dogs, they've learned I go praying. I mean, just leave me alone. Praying. <laughs> when they want to come up, I got to go to the bathroom. Praying. Hold it. <laughs> um, so, when I come before the throne, I, I, there's a spirit of bowing. I need him. I need him that morning. I do not think that I can make it through that day and live. Oh, I know the old Jim. Are you kidding? He's a punk. And he's something to contend with. He is a Tasmanian devil. And only the anointing keeps him in that in that tomb. Buried in there. I can feel the anointing coming upon me as I say this because it's the way of the Lord. So in the morning, I'll come before the throne and I always travel the paths to the Gethsemane every morning. Do you know that? I don't think I've told Frankie that. My wife don't know. I've never told a human that. Every morning I travel to Gethsemane. I actually go start before there. And I thank you for coming to this stupid world. Cruel world. Unfair <clears throat> world. I thank you for coming. And I thank him for surrendering now, there's going to be a lot in this that's going to help you. I really believe that. I believe the Lord wants me to share this. <clears throat> and again, it's not because I think I'm special. I'm not. This is a prayer of the whole of reason. Value. The whole this. reason that he starts his day like this, now hear this, the whole reason he starts his day like this is because he knows he's not special. Yeah. He has to have God and more of God every single morning, or the old Jim will rise up like the old Frankie will. And the and, old friend, he was in a ditch on drugs, suicidal. And to conquer the this demons. serious, yeah. And, but rem always remember, the demons work through self. If self is under subject, then the devils can't do nothing with you. 
They can't do it. You think they go up to heaven and say, Hey God, you want to smoke a joint? He's in heaven. He, he, he you can't. The Bible even says, says God is tempt not God. tempted with yeah. sin. Right. Yeah. But my point the is, the only thing they can fight is us. Right. And because of our our carnal nature, which is supposed to be under the blood, the Bible plainly teaches that. Your carnal nature is supposed to be under subjection. Mortify the deeds of the body. The Bible says that means bring under subjection to the deeds of the body. And you're supposed to live in righteousness and holiness all the days of your life. And I just quoted a scripture. How can people debate that? Oh, nobody can live free from sin. Jesus, it says, he came that we might serve him in righteousness and holiness all, all the days, days of, of our life. life. We did not rehearse that. Yeah. So, I, I, in the morning, I force self to sit there. And we wait in the presence of God. Even if I've got things to do and there's pressure. There's things i got to do. Things i got to do. Things i got to do every day. But I don't go under pressure. And I'm quick to tell <clears> Frankie. <throat> and if he'll remember, I say this all the time. I, I'll tell him, i got to do this. i got to do this. i got to do this. Frankie, you got to understand. I can't do that because i got to do this. Nah, nah. But almost always I'll say, but I don't feel stressed about it. Or I'll say something like that to let him know that I feel pressured about this. Because I want him to know that it's not like that. Uh-uh. I don't believe in that. Um, but, so, I'll take my time, and the first thing I do, one of the first things, I'm not going to tell you all of my intimate time with the Lord, but I'm going to tell you enough that if you start to implement this into you, it's going to change your whole life. So, I'll thank Him, I'll thank Jesus for coming, and I'll thank Him for, and this brings up another quick question, just real quick. People say, well, who do you pray to? Do you pray to Jesus or do you pray to the Father? Now, sincere people have asked me that. Have you ever thought about that? Who do you pray to? Do you, I pray to Jesus? Do I pray to the Holy Ghost? Do sometimes I, pray to, I the pray to one. Sometimes I pray to all three. Sometimes I pray what to does the Bible three. say, though? Pray to your Father who's in heaven. How? In the name of Jesus. There you go. See, he has enough of the word to know that, but I do too. I talk to him all three. But, but I always start my prayer because Jesus. He died for me. I always say, oh, in the blood name of Jesus. And he says, I like it in the mighty name of Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Yes. There's no other name, name that can heal us and deliver us. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the name above all names. I can't yes. believe it's time's going that quick. Yeah, it is. So what? We'll break it into two. I'll break. Matter of fact, pause for just a second.